people will join as they join. So hi, everybody. Welcome to the May 5th, 2021 DEI work group, chaos working group call. Uh, minutes should be in the chat. And hopefully everybody has a link to those. And if you could add yourself to the meeting minutes, that would be wonderful. And tell us how you're feeling today. So I have a relatively, it looks small. I don't know how long it'll take us to get through agenda today. Um, so I would like to say thanks to Ruth and thanks to Matt Snell, Matt Cantu, who submitted the ATO. Uh, I think it's on the D, I think it's on DEI badging, like fundamentally about that. So that's awesome. And I think they're also going to be submitting to OSS Seattle. So that's that's great. So just a thanks to them and hopefully it gets accepted. Um, so that was more just a note. Moving on, badging updates. I don't know that there have been any big badging updates. I know that Matt Snell, can do, is gone uh, this month. So thanks to everybody who has kind of stepped in to help him with Moderation, Elizabeth, are you part of that at all? Just coverage. I am. Mm -hmm. Okay. So is Anita. Okay. Thanks, Anita, and thanks, Elizabeth. Yeah, sure. Yes, that's awesome. Um, and I think there's one going through the process right now with respect to badging. That's kind of working its way through, and I think it's actually close to being done. So that's. That's nice as well. Um, yesterday we had the chaos board meeting and we were able to highlight the success of the DEI badging initiative. So that was pretty awesome. It's pretty nice to show it to folks who maybe haven't seen it before. Um, so great success there. Awesome. Any questions or comments, Elizabeth or Anita? Is there anything going on that we should know over the course of the next month? I don't think so. Anita, okay. do you think so? <laughs> <laughs> well, none at um at the moment. Yesterday we had we had to go for a conference. Um that was yeah, the magic in making creating open source marketing resource workshop. And um yeah, it was an amazing one as we talked about the budget initiative and how uh, we could companies could market using the budget initiative as well. Yes, that's just about it. Awesome. What was this workshop? I wasn't, sounds interesting. Oh, okay. It was um, creating open source marketing resource workshop. I think, yeah, that was the first one. I think that was the first one held and it was yesterday. Emily was a part of it. Yeah, so it was the IEEE SA Open uh, Marketing Advisory Group. We hosted a oh. uh, mini workshop, and yeah, we we had uh, Matt actually led one of the badging breakout rooms, and so they got a lot of stuff done. And we'll have the videos and notes and stuff ready uh, by the end of the week. So if there's anything in there that you guys want to review, you're more than welcome to it. And I'll post the link as well cool. when it's up. Excellent. Awesome. Thank you, Emily. Thank you, Anita. Yeah. All right. So I would like to, I'm going to share my screen here. I would like to um, just with respect to issues and PRs, this is something we do somewhat regularly in the chaos DEI working group. And I'd just like to kind of head over there right now. So um, if you take a look at, at the issues that we have, it's mostly metric ideas, which is okay. So, so feature requests in a sense. Yeah, um, I haven't done the, the exercise to see if these metric ideas are mapped to the Spreadsheet, you know how we kind of like to yeah. keep those two aligned. I haven't done that yet. Yeah, well, the few great ideas one we can skip. I'm sure they're great ideas. We should just do them. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
So, I, I mean, if there's, you know, I just, I think if there's anything, if you could take a look at the, the list, if there's anything that kind of, you know, is interesting to you, that would be great. Um, and I also, I would just like to point out too, for folks, like if you're running a workshop or you're presenting <laughs> like an ATO, you know, as you're kind of talking about or participating in the badging, as, as you have new ideas for metrics, feel free to put them in here. So for example, the top one, a few great ideas for event metrics. Um, this was actually, that came from the podcast that we did with the LF events team, like a few things that they thought they could look for with respect to events. So as you see it, please feel free to capture them here. And Sean, did you have a comment? Um. I was looking at some like what I usually do and when I've got so many stacked up as I start with the oldest ones and I see if um, I see if they still have merit, but there's 20 of them. So I'm, I'm just going through and making comments on some of the older ones. Cool. Yeah, 197 and 198 can be closed because they went over to website, but they did not get closed, it looks like. Oh, well, just was noticing well, that. I so, I, can I do that? Can you do that? Yeah, yeah, I'm happy to. Great. Well, hey, all right. Well, that's a 10% reduction in issues, <laughs> which is cool. Um, great. There's also a couple pull requests. I had an action item for um, updating inclusive leadership. Remember, this is the metric that had kind of a long set of implementation components to it. Does anybody remember this from last time? There were some smaller request changes here, but this one also had, it was a fairly long implementation section. And there was, how about this? There was basically an action item for me to uh, go and kind of continue to reduce the implementation section. And I have not done that yet. I was doing something else. so. Still an action item for me. Um, with respect to standardizing the repo structure, uh, I think we're pretty good here. There does seem to be, I was looking at this ahead of time, something that has to do with the website. Yash, do you know what this is about here? What the Apparently, yeah, Kevin needs to merge it, I think. Uh, something to update on the website, I'm not really sure. I think it's uh, there got to do with uh, like how we display, like if we change the names of the files, so the website uh, which directly pulls from the markdown files, those names also need okay. to be changed. Something to do with that. Gotcha. Okay, so I, I'm guessing this is an issue across all working groups. Yeah, uh, Kevin. Not? Okay. I think this has been done with the other working groups. The DEI one is the only one left. Okay, gotcha. Okay, so it doesn't, doesn't seem like there's much we can do about that right now. Okay. Um, and then if I come back, so I, honestly, does anybody have questions on issues and pull requests? It doesn't seem like there's anything of crazy urgency at this point. Yes, no, good. I'm gonna be silent for a second. Okay, I take silence I as okay. Yeah. I have a yes, question. question. <laughs> um, so you were, sorry, you were okay with us if we see an idea we like, can just kind of take that and run with it? At least get a template uh, started if there isn't one? Yes. Okay. And then can you cross-reference to the spreadsheet? Yes. To like do all that, you know, talking about like you would put the link to the Google Doc, and all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Yeah, Got you. exactly. Okay, cool. Thank you. Is there one that you're interested in? There's a couple, so I'm going to poke around a little bit more. Okay. Okay, cool. Thank you. All right. Um, okay, so I would like to give an update. We have a couple people on the call who are part of the DEI reflection. So again, this is a kind of a, not an initiative that's we're talking in this working group, but kind of something that's extra time where we're taking a look at the chaos project in particular and how um, we can center DEI um, 
more deliberately within the project itself. And so one of the, there are a couple areas that I, that we're starting to take a look at. And one is just with respect to running a survey for the community. And we've been drafting a community survey that you can see here. So that link there, of course, and if I did click it, it would take me here. And so I'm just curious if people have any thoughts on the survey at the moment? You know, feedback is most welcome. Any initial reaction to it as you take a look? And this is something that we can bring back. So um, I'm just going to scroll slowly through here for those of you that are just watching on the screen. I think we're lacking in coffee. <laughs> More coffee. I can say I actually haven't had any today. I haven't felt like yeah. I needed it. I just finished my three. first. I could use another one. It's a it's a long answer text though, Amy. So coffee is coffee. Not a long coffee, 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 <laughs> coffee, coffee, coffee. Coffee is part of DEI because <laughs> there's no body, let alone diverse bodies. Otherwise. Hello, Don. Good morning, hey, Don. How's it going? Good. So Don, oh, that's okay. You, I think you did a keynote today. So you get like a major excuse. For it was not a keynote. It was just a regular oh. talk because it's KubeCon and keynotes are like super <clears throat> important there. Oh, well, I figured you were super important. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun though. The talk went well. Cool. That's the important part. <laughs> so Don, what we're taking a look at here is this is so with respect to the DEI reflection that we're doing, you know, on the chaos project, mm -hmm. one of the things that we're looking to do is a survey with to send out to community members just to kind of see um, the pulse of community members with respect to DEI. So we're just kind of looking at an early draft of that survey right here. So if you have thoughts or um, questions, just feel cool. free to speak up. And it's in the minutes too, if you want to look directly. So is the question adapted from the Drupal community? Or yes. what was adapted from the Drupal community? The, que the question. Okay. Well, the answer is two. Um, for that one, it was that we were trying to think about what do we classify contributions as? And the Drupal community had done some really great work of how they break up contributions in their community. So we use theirs and improvised a little bit as a model. Okay. That's fun of open source. We borrow everybody's questions and we adapt them to ourselves. <laughs> so we think um, this question, the I feel welcome in the chaos community, and I feel like I'm making a contribution and the next one to what I, uh, no, maybe not the next one, but these Matt, two. Just one thing there. Can you make the smiley faces and the sound, sad faces bigger? Because at least yeah, so when actually, sharing it, you can't tell which is which. <laughs> yes. So I think, I don't know if we can do this in this Google survey thing, but maybe every response would just be an emoji face. Have you seen that before? You know, like where it goes from happy to indifferent in the middle to sad. And you click on the face, you know what I'm talking about? Yes. I do. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> so the, I think we're gonna just do, instead of one, two, three, four, five, just faces. That's the plan anyway, but I don't know if Google could do that. And and when we do the data analysis, will we do, uh, we'll assign numbers to them so we can mm -hmm. get like an average? Is that kind of the plan? 
Yeah, I suppose it's kind of hard to run averages on smiley faces. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I um I do have access to Qualtrics. I'm not sure if that would make a difference. What is that? It's a survey tool. The universities are common subscribers. A lot of it's a people not in universities use Survey Monkey. It's a more robust than this. Like it allows you to do just more things than. But if we can get it done here, that's great. And Amy, to your point, if we can't, we'll just make those bigger. <laughs> And then the name, these are optional. I think we say at the top, everything is optional, but we really want to make sure. Okay. So are there any thoughts or comments on this survey as it, as it is right now? I think um, where it says, do you think that current set of working groups cover all the main areas of interest of the chaos community? Um, I think there should be a follow-up question to that. So if no, you know, what can we do to, you know, cover? Gotcha. Yeah, because yeah. I know the next one says, you know, what, what does the community lack that you wish it didn't, but it doesn't really address what they think we're not addressing in the yeah. Okay, People so, may not realize that's the follow up to that one. So this. Add option or add other. Yeah, um, so if is... you hit add other, hang on a second. If you hit add other, would that give you a text block or no? Oh, I see what you're saying. Like it's just putting it in this question. Yeah, that's what I was trying to figure out if you could. Gotcha. You may not be able to. Okay, Emily, point taken. <laughs> and we'll either add it to this question or just a follow-on question, you know, if no to the above. And maybe does um does Google survey allow you to um, manage navigation? Do you know what I'm talking about? Like in Qualtrics, like sometimes if you answer no, then it'll skip the next set of questions. I think you can add some logic to it, if I recall. Okay. I think. Okay. All right, so I will, so to Emily's point, um, the work group question, if no, what, how did you phrase it, Emily, do you remember? <laughs> <laughs> Um, I just put if no, you know what, basically what can you do differently or what can we address? What can the working groups address that they're lacking? Something to that effect. Yeah. Okay, I get it, cool. All right, thank you. Any other comments? All right, well, thank you for that. Uh, all right, so one of the, the next thing on the agenda here is with event demographics. If you recall, we have attendee demographics and speaker demographics currently as two metrics. And when we put these two metrics into practice in the DEI event badging initiative, they ended up really just kind of doing the exact same thing, um, just with a filter on attendees and a filter on speakers. So we, we didn't feel like having them as two metrics really made a ton of sense. So the proposal was to create two metrics. I just, even though I said we don't need two metrics, the, the proposal was to create two metrics, one called event demographics, and then another metric called project demographics. And so event demographics is to, 
um, bring together attendee and speaker demographics into one metric. And so that's what this is here. And so if you could click the link and also the demographics question was asking issues about um, issues of inclusion, which I, were a little bit different than what we were able to ask in the event, the badging program. So for example, like as an attendee, do you feel included in um, say the ancillary events of the, of the, of the event, which is different than the demographic questions. So could you, could everybody head over there for a second and take a look at this? You might need to share it. It's, I don't think it's shared. Okay, I can do that. I always forget that step. Hold on just a second. All right, all done with that. I'll put it in the chat here. Sorry if I'm causing distraction. My keyboard seems to be not working. Like the adept double attend to. They really, really attend. So this should be relatively short as I drew these things together, these two metrics together. The only thing, look like there's a lot of new typing. So the only thing that this metric currently doesn't cover that we seem to ask for in the badging program is the display of that demographic information. So for those that have been through the, the badging process, one of the things that we ask is how are you um, capturing this data and what what are you actually capturing this information? And we often ask, you know, do you share this information back with the community? And if so, how do you do that? So do you think that's something we should include in this metric? And if so, where might that go?
I think it's important to include it. Um, okay. We could put it down here, maybe share. I'm under objectives. <laughs> with others. Yeah, with others. I mean, because in this day and age, people may choose to submit a proposal or not submit a proposal based on their demographic past. That's not to say that just because one year they had a bad year doesn't mean that they're not looking to change it the next year. But I think people are using demographics to determine some of these things, especially when we start traveling again. Okay. Okay, we have two comments. The attend to comment. So Dawn or Emily. Sorry, it's actually not the attend to that that I'm curious about because the if I read down through it, this really isn't how. Like if you if you look through it, the, we're not really talking about how you do this. We're really talking about whether. I'm not I'm not sure. I feel like the question I took it as whether too. Whether you do it or not, not where you do it. Gotcha. Not necessarily like looking at the processes by which it's done, the how, yeah. but whether or not you're doing it or not. Okay. So just instead of how, just whether. I don't know. That sounds that sounds weird too. This is why I'm struggling with this. Huh. Maybe the degree to which, <laughs> or something like that, because it's like kind of a spectrum. It's not oh. an all or nothing. Yeah. I use yeah. how and to what extent when I get to these quandaries. To what extent? That, I like that. I like how to and, what extent. That's a classic researcher way of saying, okay, we want to know how, but then we want to know how much at the same time. Is that okay? Yeah, I think that's better. Okay. Just, Justin, do you want to comment on what you just added? Yeah, so this is actually a point where I guess I'm not very clear historically on the, the metric proposal piece, but trying to understand what the question is as a tool to frame the metric. I'm wondering if part, part of the goal here is to provide like insight or, or a strike guides or guidelines to actually how do you measure these things that are actually really sensitive, like or, or can be delicate to collect beyond just like, we're going to see how many people attended from this demographic and that demographic, but doing it, I don't know. I don't know if this made sense or not, but it was an idea I was thinking about from the document, but. Uh, could this be, I think this is a point that we have with respect to how the management of that information, this is where you're going, right? Like how, how does the, the event manage this, this information that they receive? Um, I don't think we've ever talked about that with respect to the, the attendee or the demographic metric. Um, so, and I don't think we ask that question in the badging process, do we, Elizabeth? Does that, I don't think we ever do. But it's a I can really double good check. question. Okay. I mean, I'm wondering if it's something down in objectives, Justin. So, you know, a statement. Um, this maybe not the best sentence just hurt, but a statement of 
privacy management. Uh, information, you know. All right, cool. Because I actually, I think that's a really good question and one that we don't ask in the review process. And has anybody at an event or attending an event ever seen a statement of how that information is managed? I want to say have? Linux Foundation might. Okay. That I know of offhand because they do a little more. I don't remember offhand OpenStack saying anything. Okay. But I know Linux Foundation has the I'll talk to anybody and so on and so forth badges. So they may. Okay. Yeah, we just ask detail the process for measuring. We don't say, what are you doing with that data or how are you keeping okay. it? You know, I'm thinking is Matt, Matt Cantu, Snell, as he's rolling out kind of these updates, this might be a really nice question to ask. And really from an event organizer perspective, it's just a statement or maybe to Amy's point, like a, a point to a Linux, a higher organizational statement about how that information is managed. I think in 2021, it's a completely fair question to ask event organizers to, to be a bit more explicit about, right? Justin, does that take care of all your stuff? Go ahead. So I got a thumbs up before. Yeah. So I think so it fits into the objectives. Okay. So plus one. Okay, great. Um, Justin, you're on. You're on again. <laughs> for a comment you have here. Yeah, not sure if this makes sense, but it's something I see a lot. The, these kinds of metrics. I think there's a really interesting opportunity when we look at how we measure these things to look beyond just individual narrow categories and thinking about how these different backgrounds intersect with each other and how trying to map those relationships instead of just saying like x number of women and men attended the event but going a level deeper and saying you know maybe looking at across all the women who attended and looking at this other question we asked how many of them have a universe depending what kind of questions you, you wanted to get out of it right but I think there's a really interesting opportunity being on the, the being on the side of things where we're trying to define how do we measure and and talk about the relationship of these things. That's one thing I think would be really cool if we could. I don't have an answer. It's just a an idea. But I feel like there's an opportunity here when you have that kind of demographic data to to mash it up against each other because you can get a lot more deeper insights into who's participating and who's not participating where could you where are their gaps and it's just things that can help you identify those then beyond just those narrow categories right mm -hmm. does, yeah. does that make sense it does yeah and i think that intersectionality point is is really important i mean because you know you know my experience as a white woman in tech may be completely different than a black woman in tech for example and you know I don't know. There's just, there's just, we're not, we're not one thing, right? We're lots of things and we have lots of different, lots of different backgrounds and things that make us um, different. So I think it's, I think that the intersection of some of those is really important. Also, I feel like that's kind of where this kind of movement is going is to, you know, like once we figure out how to collect this, this like kind of surface level data, like what's what's next, and I think that intersectionality is what's kind of going to be the next thing that we start to focus on. We meaning like the broader we, not we chaos, but the broader right we. society, open source, the world. So, is there a statement that can be made, Justin, in the objectives that could help draw this forward? I was trying to figure out where to place that on the document. I don't know if it makes sense in objectives, probably more in the data, like maybe in the filters or visualization strategies, because uh, I don't know. I, I had a hard time placing it. I don't know if objectives make sense either over. Okay. Um, all right. So. Um, let's 
so I mean, an objective of doing this would, to me, to Elizabeth's point and Don's point and your point, Justin, was to to look a little bit more deeply at this data, right? So you have the data that's collected, but there's there are richer stories to tell against this data. And so an objective is to, to me, um, ensure the proper collection of the data so that you can ask these richer stories or tell these richer narratives. Is that fair? <laughs> Yeah, no, I think that makes sense. I guess my head was a little more into the data collection piece, but I think it, it makes sense. So, tell richer um, maybe not richer stories. I, what do you think the phrasing is here? Help me out, somebody. Um, Stronger insights. Maybe then, stronger insights with regard to intersectionality of demographic data. Does that make, does that okay. sound right? Yeah. Can you type that? Oh yeah, I thought you were going to do that. But... <laughs> My brain was looking at filters. And so is this, do you see what I have highlighted here in filters? Is this different than what was just talked about. Maybe, okay. Well, maybe we have this captured in the objectives. All right, thank you, everybody. Oh. Justin, you added something else to virtual events. I guess that one is just a, a quick one, but I've seen, I don't know if you've ever been to an event on Hopin, but they have polls there. I just have seen some really creative polls at these virtual events that you can ask questions to understand who's at your event and it's really quick, oh. easy and convenient, but that was just okay. from one platform, over. Did you, did you ever see it within um, like a session, a polling? Being done? Yeah, I've, I've been to a few events on Hopin. That, that's where I've, I saw it from. And we use it a lot in Fedora. And mm -hmm. the polls, pe people are really, people have a lot of fun with the polls too. People will ask huh. us to run them. And um, so <coughs> we have really goofy ones that are really meaningless. But then we have ones that can be really strategic or insightful about like, okay. what are you connecting from? What device? What kind of connectivity do you have? Are you lagging? Are you having? You know, these kinds of things. Mm -hmm. I like it. Has anybody been to a live event where they did polling, real time I, polling? I, I have. It's the CSCW community has done it for a number of years. They also use it, they use it for polls, but they also use it to cue your questions so that a moderator can sort of choose the most. Interesting questions, but also I think questions from a more diverse audience. Does it work well? Um, in that, so in that community it does because everyone is affluent and has a mobile device with good connectivity. Um, okay. I don't know if it worked well for, for someone that did not, ha wasn't affluent enough to carry a nice mobile device with them. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. These are great suggestions. I'll probably get this, start moving this into the GitHub space and out of here. I do appreciate the comments. All right. Um, we had a few other things. Oh, chairs for this working group. Elizabeth, I think you put that on there. I did. Do you want to talk about that or I can? Doesn't matter. So for, yeah, I can do it. So for each of the working groups, we're gonna 
have two chairs. These aren't necessarily uh, the maintainers for the repository, but two people who are the primary points of contact for the working group. And so we have to choose chairs. <laughs> so does anybody want to be a chair? For the DEI? I, so I don't want to be one, but um, Georg is not on the call today and he's been kind of a key mm -hmm. participant. In this, so I, I want to make sure we don't forget the people who aren't on the call at this very moment. Yeah, I think I yours is about key or okay. <laughs> I being don't think chairs. I don't think two white men are the right message. No, but <laughs> I'm just gonna say that out loud. But they'd both maybe, be fantastic. So, <laughs> yeah, well, I maybe mean, maybe to to Don's first point, this could just be like a call for folks. Like we won't decide today. You know what I mean? And we can, you know, so. Yeah. Cause like maybe Matt and Ruth, since they're not here or is Ruth That'd here? That'd be perfect. <laughs> you don't show up, you get to be chair. <laughs> I also think Amy or Elizabeth would make lovely chairs. <laughs> yeah, I concur. I, I want to. I want to second that motion. All in favor? I'm I, here. I know, <laughs> but so and so is Elizabeth. So it's perfect. You're consenting. <sighs> That's funny. <laughs> I mean, I think it's a great opportunity to let people take a leadership role who haven't had one, because um, we're not hard to oversee or anything so this i think it would be a great opportunity for matt and ruth if they're interested okay. to be honest with you um let's carry it over till next week i'm not saying table it carrying it over yes. and get their input or matt's gonna be gone for a whole month he is i i don't think there's a ton of urgency on this okay so. Right. No, I, I, we've been functioning for years without that, but I said so we can get it at some point. Um, and then last thing, Slack channel. Come join us. <laughs> Click the link. It's, uh, it's strange. We've had more conversation in the Slack channel in like the last two days than, than ever. We, it's just that ever. So it's really, it's at least nice. It's really nice to see. Yeah, I didn't we, we'd had this for a while, but I guess we never deployed it because people decided against it. I just yeah, I just think it was like I feel for... like yeah, I feel like maybe I joined one previously and then I lost it because it was never used. Yeah, I just knew about the IRC channel. Well, I think the badging, everybody. Yeah, badging used it quite a bit at the beginning. Okay. But mm -hmm. the greater chaos community did not doesn't look like anymore. All right. Well, um, okay, that's it. Good job. We are through. It is great to see everybody. We'll stop my share. <clears throat> Thank you for your time yeah. today. Everybody have an excellent week and we'll see you in a variety of different places. All right. <laughs> Sounds good. Bye. 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 Take care, everyone. Bye. Take care, all.